guys how are you all doing it's a girl cindy and i'm back again today guys with another gist i trust you all are doing so great thank you guys so much for clicking to watch this video guys in today's video we are gonna be talking about this video right here before i go ahead i just want to say that this video is for educational purposes it is not to bully anyone or harass anyone but it's just to spread awareness so you guys can see and know what is happening on social media especially on tiktok so guys this white lady in this video is explaining why white people do not have black friends yo i'm gonna let this video roll a lot i mean she said in this video and of course i have put together a few stitches obviously black people and few white people stitched her video but hey her comment section yo they came for her in her comment section but yeah let's see the video first this is the post that keeps on giving and in all the wrong ways okay i've had to block so many people delete so many comments and literally literally the only thing i did was shared the comment of a mutual and it was an observation that observation was statistically backed up by data that says white people in large do not have a black friend and yet have some very strong opinions so the question in that that we have to deal with as white people is how is it we have so many strong opinions about racism the impact of race on black people the history of racism in this country the current day impacts of any number of things on black people like how is it we have so many strong opinions as white folks when statistically speaking we don't have any black friends it's a fair point in question. And if anybody who is, you know, thinking like, hey, I want to be an intellectually honest person of integrity, uh, and, and then they realize like, oh, shoot, I really don't have any black friends, but whoa, yeah, I do have some strong opinions about black people's business. Like, why is that? And maybe I should sit down and maybe I should think about it. Maybe I should reflect. Maybe I should dig into why it is I feel entitled to have opinions about things that have nothing to do with me. And, and this is the funny thing because people understand this concept. So I use this analogy a lot because I had cancer. And when um, I was diagnosed with cancer, I wanted to know from oncologists, experts, people who'd experienced cancer, like what, what did you do to heal? How did you get healing? I didn't go to my eight year old and say like, Hey, what do you think I should do? I didn't go to the guy working at the gas station who's never had cancer and doesn't know anything about cancer to say, Hey, what should I do? I really value your perspective on how I should treat my body for cancer, right? Like we can all understand that. But the minute you start telling us white people that we need to sit down and be quiet and maybe not act like an expert on something we have no lived embodied experience with like watch out people coming out of the woodworks okay and that doesn't even get into this comment here this is okay how many white friends do the black folks have every race segregates themselves it's not done intentionally or out of malice and i think a lot of us white folks believe this and feel this way and live in vacuums and because we don't have friends of other backgrounds races ethnicities like we can just be like oh this is just our little bubble you know whatever but there is a history of segregation and violence and redlining and and racism and did i say violence against black people indigenous people and other people of color that led us into this place where today the vast majority of white americans do not have friends who are black and and it doesn't work the other way for the people who are gonna be like hey uh you know the vice versa no not vice versa watch another video that i posted on that please and yes i know i'm white and you know all all right guys so she did this video in response to a comment a black woman left in her comment section i'm gonna show you this comment it says the vast majority of white people have zero black friends they know nothing about us and our experience i saw another comment she obviously did a response video which i'm gonna show you now the comment says it is vice versa like black people don't have white friends and uh, white people don't have black friends now i'm gonna show you her response video to that comment please check it out it's late and this post has been wild over 200 comments um, I've had to block a lot of trolls. So basically you get blocked if you have no name, no face and zero likes. This is likely a troll account as well, because again, no likes, but I'm gonna respond to this. Vice versa means nothing. The point of this comment is to say 
that statistically speaking, and this is a statistical fact in the United States, that the vast majority of white people do not have black friends. In fact, the last time I checked, it was 75% of white people don't have one single black friend. It's not a vice versa thing, by the way. It doesn't work that way. The reason, though, that this is the case is multifaceted, right? One, look at historically redlining. Read on redlining. And then read about segregation, okay? Who instituted segregation and why? And then think about white people calling the police. Think about all sorts of other reasons that black people have zero reason, zero, like negative numbers to trust, entertain, or seek friendship with white people. Okay? Like, People want to come on here and they want to whinge about it and complain because, oh my gosh, you guys are talking about things that make me feel sad and hurt and whatever and in my feelings. There's just a reality to the racialized situation that we live in. Race is a colonial construct without any biological realities, but we have very real consequences to that, as we've mentioned. So anyway, so the question becomes, what do you do about it? If you don't give a shit, scroll on by. Do not waste my time having to block your ass in my comment section. But if you're interested in leaning into this and learning about it and doing something about it, awesome. Start with the book Me and White Supremacy by Layla Saad. Follow content creators like White Woman Whisperer, Portia Noir, Vonda Page, my Style File, Desiree B. Stevens, Maisha T. Hill A Check Your Privilege over on another app in particular. Get learning. There are a lot of really good resources, books, podcasts, um, Seen on Radio, Seeing White is a great series. I recommend it all the time. And let's do something to deal with this. Hey guys, as usual, I have put together a few stitches. Of course, like I said, black people stitch this video and just few white people, which we are gonna see these stitches together. Stay with me, guys. Let's check out the stitches, please. White people in large do not have a black friend and yet have some very strong opinions. Y'all, please go watch that video and come back. She makes such a valid point about how so many white people have such strong opinions about the black community yet don't have black friends or you know like barely know black people which reminds me of a story from my childhood story time so i've said before i grew up dirt fucking poor there was a black woman named marion when i was about seven or eight years old if it was not for this woman my brother my father and i would have went hungry many 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 days she used to babysit us and she was by far one of the sweetest women i have ever met in my entire life i come from an extremely racist family this is the only black person i have ever seen my father around or have somewhat of a relationship with this woman fed us. She babysat us. She washed our clothes because we didn't, we couldn't afford even a laundromat. We washed our clothes out in the tub. This woman helped care for us. And one of the few times I saw my father cry is when she sent food to our house and in a can of coffee in the top of the lid, she had put a $20 bill for my father. This woman lived on a fixed income and went out of her way to help us and my father. When my father saw that money, he cried. We were really struggling and it meant a lot to him that she did these things. He used to call her one of the good ones. And it has been my experience in the last 20 years that I have lived in the black community. I'm surrounded by Marians. I'm surrounded by people who care who want to make sure that you eat? Who want to make sure that you're okay? Do you need help? 
I'm not saying the hood doesn't have its issues. It does. Every community does. But the black community has your back. And even though this woman, this beautiful black woman, helped us like she did, my father was still one of the most racist people I have ever known. He still dropped the N-word like it was nothing. He still used racial slurs when talking about non-white people. And I still was not allowed to have black friends. The level of ignorance and hatred and racist people. It knows no bounds and it has no shame. God bless the Marians of the world. Okay, part two coming from her. You know, it's so funny that you would say this because I actually think about her all the time. I believe that she is probably the biggest reason why I am a huge advocate in protecting and defending and standing up for black women and understanding that black women are the most disrespected and forgotten in all of America. And it really bothers me to this day that this was a black woman going out of her way to help this racist white man and his two white children. And I wonder, did she know he was racist? If she did, how phenomenal. How, like the, the strength of character within her to still help him blows my mind and because she was like the first and only black person i was allowed around because like i said she babysat us for free by the way i saw i was able i, I got like a little peek you know a little tiny peek into what a black person is really like really like not what i see on tv not what my family tells me. When this woman hugged me, I I have no I have no words to express the amount of love and comfort and security that lied within her embrace. I looked forward to her hugs all the time. All the time. And I believe that my personal relationship with her, even though I was so young, I believe that that is what a huge part of what shifted my perception to be completely different of that of my family. Because even though I was young, I was still perceptive enough to see that this isn't adding up. Like what my family is saying about black people and my father calling her one of the good ones. Because mind you, we met her family as well. Her whole family was amazing. Very kind. Very sweet. And oh my God, the food was... Oh, oh my God, the food. And unfortunately, we moved and I never saw her again. I don't know if she's still alive or not. I would love to find her and hug her and thank her and express to her everything that she means to me and meant to me then and has meant to me my whole life but since i don't think that'll ever happen i do my best to honor her in the way that i live today she was everything to me guys this story really touched me okay and i wish that white people would come across this video i just wish that there's nothing like racism but it is just the order of the day and we are literally living with it as black people and um yeah i have more stitches guys coming just very few please stay with me let's check them out this is the post that keeps on giving and in all the wrong ways okay i had to block please pause and go watch the rest of her video uh, and then come back to me i totally agree with everything she says. I totally put a, a stamp on her message. There are so many white people who think and have an opinion on what does and doesn't happen to us. And they're strong opinions. They're strong and they're very vocal. But yet, if you examine their personal lives, they don't really have black friends. They don't have these discussions with 
black people in their lives. So you kind of wonder, how do you have such a strong opinion about some that you don't experience? You don't know someone who experiences it and you don't have conversations around it to understand it, but yet you got an opinion. Um, then someone interjected their point that, well, just like there's a bunch of us that don't have black friends, I'm sure there's a bunch of black people that don't have white friends, and doesn't that make them just as much racist? And as she stated, and I'm going to state no, because I'm going to say this. One thing I can say about black people in general, even though historically and now we have been treated horribly by white people, our ability to still welcome someone different into our community and into our lives is huge. I'm not going to say that doesn't mean every black person is like, yay, white people, woo. But I'm just saying that for the most part, we're accepting of all kinds of people because we know what it's like to be treated like shit and don't want to, even in anger, turn that on to another person. So I would have to disagree because I think more black people are accepting of and inviting of others into our lives and into our culture. Um, some would argue that we shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't be so quick to be that way given how we're treated, but it's the truth. So um, yes, I, I definitely agree with everything she said. And maybe if people stop talking and holding on to their fucked up opinions, and actually listen to black voices, there may be some changes. White people in large do not have a black friend and yet have some very strong opinions. Facts went to predominantly white schools and grew up in predominantly white neighborhoods pretty much my entire life. And I have uh, several friends that I graduated high school with that I'm still close with to this day. But I can almost guarantee, I just have a sixth sense that somewhere out there is a high school, a middle school classmate that has used me as some example in some race relations discussion. My friends that I graduated with, we've had hard conversations about race and I know where they stand on a lot of these issues. But those others are very honestly acquaintances and barely acquaintances at that. Honestly, I don't even recognize half of my high school classmates when I'm back in the area. So I always laugh at these, but I know insert black person from whatever, because I know nine times out of 10, they know that person casually. They don't really know them. They're not really friends. I've been a token pretty much all my life. Trust me, that's the case. People in large do not have a black friend and yet have some very strong opinions. Go back and watch that video because she's absolutely correct. The white people who have very strong opinions about racism not being a thing anymore do not typically have any black people in their life. No, the guy that you say hi on your way to the break room doesn't fucking count. The black woman in the cubicle that you keep touching her braids even though she tells you not to, she's not a friend. You might have acquaintances, but you genuinely do not care about these people. So until you have black people over for a meal, or you get invited to the barbecue, you know their kids' names, you have ridden in the car with them, possibly have gotten pulled over with them. Until you have a genuine relationship with black people, your opinions about racism and how it isn't a thing just isn't fucking valid because you haven't heard stories and experiences from black people that you love, that you care about their well-being. You're concerned about their family and their kids in today's society. Until you have that kind of relationship with black people, you don't get to negate their experiences. Do better. As usual guys, after seeing this video, I quickly checked that conversation out and I took some screenshots of comments for you guys to see other people's opinion. And as for me, I totally agree with her. Like she said the truth. And um, truth be told, the people, the certain group of people that didn't like what she said, literally came for her in her comment section. I mean, she was getting backlash. And like she said, she was deleting comments and blocking some of them. But yeah, let me know your take if you have any guys in the comments. And thank you all so much for watching. Can you like, share, subscribe, and as usual, I'm going to see you all in my next video. Stay blessed. Bye.